applaud my teacher. I believe Jason deserves this award because with his innovative thinking, he has broken barriers at the high school level, and that's improving accessibility to our deaf community. We just wouldn't be who we are without him. I wanted to come to South because of him in this great theater program. I wanted to be a part of the, the legacy here. Mr. Zumbuck has changed the entire trajectory of my life. Welcome to Backstage with Richard Ridge. My guest, Jason Zembuk Young, is the recipient of the 2023 Excellence in Theater Education Award, which is presented annually by Carnegie Mellon University and its Tony Award partners at the Broadway League and American Theater Wing. Making theater accessible for all audiences has been the hallmark of his 20 years as a drama teacher. As an advocate for the deaf and hard of hearing population and those with special needs, Jason has produced full length main stage productions in both voice and American Sign Language. Please say hello to Tony Award winner for excellence in theater education, Jason Zembuk Young. Welcome. Hi, how are you, Jason? I'm well. How are you? First of all, how are you and where are you? I'm doing well. So I am now, I've left South Plantation High School, sadly, um, but for personal reasons, we needed to make a move for our family. I am at a brand new high school in Palm Beach County named Dr. Joaquin Garcia High School. It is the first school in the history of Palm Beach County to be named after a prominent Hispanic leader. And I am so excited to be here. That is so wonderful. First of all, congratulations on your Tony Award. Have you been able to put this honor into some kind of perspective and what it's meant to you? <laughs> Still not, no, <laughs> not, not, not even a little really. I, I, okay, so I think that one of the coolest things about this is that first, the, it, it, it's a community-based nomination. So it was a group of parents who got together with a group of former students and community members and everything to put this wonderful package together, nominating me for consideration for the Excellence in Theater Education Award. Um, and so that in and of itself was absolutely amazing. Um, after the announcement was made and I was told that I was the winner of the award, I, I then had to start to scramble and figure out, okay, and I was told, hey, by the way, you have to speak. Uh, so and now I'm scrambling to figure out what to say. And in reaching out and, and working with former students of mine and community members that were deaf and hard of hearing, asking them for input and to actually have them assist me in the glossing and the interpretation of my speech, um, just the stuff that they just kind of reiterated, I, I never even realized the kind of an impact that our program was having on a community, um, which, was, which, which was very humbling to me um, and, and very validating, very validating to, to my career and what I've been doing, but, but more than that, very humbling. Yeah, okay. So how magical was it being at the Tony Awards this year, <laughs> accepting the award? Was it all surreal? It, I, I don't even know if I remember half of it uh, because yeah, the, it, to, to say that it was surreal is certainly an understatement. Um, you know, from the moment I got on the plane to head to New York to being whisked off of the, the plane and off to our hotel accommodations at the Sofitel um, and, and the way that we, like my husband and I both were just put on like this glamorous pedestal was just so insane. The Carnegie Mellon University folks, the Broadway League, the American Theater Wing, everybody that we had any kind of interactions with were just the nicest, kindest people. Um, and, and it really felt like, I don't know, like I had known these folks my entire life and it, it certainly was a red carpet experience. Okay, but then to be acknowledged, Danae Benton comes out and talks about you. And I looked at all the stars that night that are just cheering you on for everything that you do. I mean, that had to be the wildest night of your life. Yeah, it was, it was insane. From being in the green room and 
having like Tony Bennett <laughs> five feet away from me um, and and all of these folks that were just amazing. I mean, and, and Danae was just such a such a wonderful, wonderful person and, and made me feel right at home to walking out on that stage and then seeing all of these people. And in the middle of my speech, when when there was I'm getting choked up, <clears throat> um, you know, there was this this eruption of applause and and just it, yeah <laughs> truly it, it's it's it leaves you speechless where does the award live okay so in our house we have uh, a little shelving unit and uh my daughter actually it was really important to her that we we got we gathered all of this kind of stuff together um so it's on a shelf where um, we have some other recognition and everything with the Tony award and with the announcement and all of the press, um, the, we, we actually had a, a federal proclamation that had come in my name and that's up on the shelf and the city of plantation in Florida and just all of this stuff. And of course, you know, it lives right next to my daughter's, um, leadership award and all of that other kind of stuff. Yeah. I think that's great. Well, we're gonna continue talking about everything that you do, but I do wanna to mention to everyone watching that submissions are now being accepted for the 2024 Excellence in Theater Education Award. So please just click the link above to submit your teacher today. Jason, you have been teaching the arts for 20 years. Talk about your inclusive theatrical programming with the deaf and hard of hearing and special needs students. So, you know, I think that I think that the mission for every educator is kind of the same, which is, you know, if there are kids in front of you, find ways for them to be successful. So I can't say that I started out with this mission to produce deaf theater and 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 to establish this all-inclusive program. But I'll tell you, you know, like when I went to South Plantation High School, we had a deaf and hard of hearing population that was part of the school. So it only made sense that when they were in front of me that I figured out how to incorporate them and make them feel like they had a place and, and a safe space to explore themselves and, and to be creative and to tap into all of their creative potential. And then from there, it started with, I guess, um, other folks saying, hey, listen, this is a, a program that no matter what you look like, no matter what language you use to communicate, no matter what your exceptionality is, that there's a space for you. Um, there's a place for us. And, and, uh, and, and so from there, it just kind of took off. And I, I, I find it very rewarding. Um, it keeps me on my toes when I have somebody that is on the spectrum that I'm working with I, to, to try and figure out how to have them be as successful as possible, just like with somebody who is visually impaired or blind, or I've had wheelchair bound students. Um, and and, and it, it really is just, it's just amazing, you know? And, and I think that that's kind of what's kept me in theater for all these years. I didn't actually start in theater. It, theater found me. And, and it really, the most rewarding thing for me is especially in, our society today, you know, these kids come together and they work towards one commonality, one common goal, and they have a purpose. And when everybody, it, it doesn't matter who you are or where you come from and, and you know, working together to create and work on a, a show, it's just, a, it's a magical experience. And kids that never would have even um, had a conversation with each other let alone work together at, is, is, is just very, it's very heartwarming, you know, that it, it brings kids together and, and it really gives me hope for um, where we can go and where we can be as a people. See, what I also love is it's not just on stage. You find places for people to learn their craft, working lighting, scenery. Absolutely. I mean, talk about that element. And it's, it's, you find something that, you know, Someone may, might have told them once, you can't do this. You find something for them that they can do, right? Talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll tell you, if anybody is ever looking for a follow spot operator, find somebody who's deaf. Because you know, it's so easy for, for hearing people to get distracted by everything that's going around that, that I have, I've had deaf students that work follow spot and, and work in other areas that, that require this kind of level of concentration. Um, and I don't know, I just, I think that 
if there's a if there's a desire for somebody to work in one element or another, then then we figure out how to make it work. And you know, like sadly, sometimes I think that funds become an issue and and access to certain technology. But I mean, with like a lightboard operator, there's absolutely no reason why anybody couldn't be a lightboard operator. Um, same thing with sound. You know, sound becomes a little difficult for our deaf our, our deaf students, but somebody who is visually impaired or blind, why not? You know. Um, so again, I think that if you're willing to to really look for what somebody is capable of doing rather than focusing on what they can't, um, that it just lays itself out there for you. Yeah. Talk about the importance of arts education and what it means to your students and how it's changed them. Oh, um, I will never forget this one young girl who, again, she was deaf. She uh, actually, so deafness is a spectrum, right? So she is deaf, but on the hard of hearing end of that spectrum. And I remember when she came in, she was my Maria in West Side Story when we produced that. And this young girl, um, when I met her, she, she would not use sign language in order to communicate because she was always afraid of people um, making fun of her or, it, or her looking different than her colleagues and her peers and everything like that. And then by the time she got to her senior year, which was when we produced West, West Side Story, there was an interview with her afterwards. And she had talked about how that being on the stage and having a utility and a purpose and her mode of communication being something that literally had a, sh a spotlight shined on it was something that really truly made her proud of who she was as a person and and proud to be deaf and to use her language and her communication. And I, I think that in terms of theater education, one, it is the most interdisciplinary of any study that is out there. When you produce a period piece, the history that goes behind it, the literature study, the from the technical education aspects of it, from physics to chemistry to color theory to it, it, it is as inclusive as it possibly can be. But it also gives our students a platform on, on which to stand, literally, in front of an audience. And it gives them a voice, and it gives them a, a place to actually use that voice if they are empowered to do so. So was, I can't think of yeah. anything else more important than that. Yeah. No, because that leads into my next question. How does arts education prepare students for life, even if they don't want to have a career in theater, what it offers them to continue in their life? You know... In addition to all of the educational benefit to it, theater education, especially theater education, right? There is a sense of ownership and responsibility. There is a sense of a work ethic that I think is second to none. So when a student walks into a classroom and they fail to turn in that math test or that English paper or whatever, the only person that they're actually hurting is themselves, right? And so at this young age, they walk in and they think they know what responsibility means, but until they're put into a position where they are in charge themselves and to, when they're, they're put into leadership positions where their, their, their colleagues are their friends and there's a sense of ownership behind that, um, I, I think that, that they never really quite know what responsibility and work ethic looks like until then. Um, so I think that that work ethic that comes with putting on a show and being involved in a production is second to none. And it prepares them for any walk of life because if they're able to attack whatever it is that they're doing um, with that same kind of an energy and a, a, a refusal to accept the answer no, then that prepares them for anything, like careers in law, in medicine, as well as you know their own owning their own business or, or anything like that. I just think what you have done is help people find their way and accepting who they are, finding a tribe. That's the best thing about theater. And yeah. we all open that auditorium door in our school, not knowing what was behind when you walked out 
in front of all those seats and we saw a stage for the very first time and we all found our tribe. And I think yes. what you do is so important. Now at your new school, what's the new school you're at now? So it's Dr. Joaquin Garcia High School in Palm Beach. Um, we have our, our the, the, the namesake for our school is a Cuban born gentleman who became a medical doctor and came to the United States. And he found his home in the Palm Beach County area. He, our, our mascot is a bulldog because he was known as being a bulldog in terms of advocating yeah. for students' rights and access, uh, equal access. Uh, obviously, he had a very, very uh, fond spot in his heart for our Hispanic community and our Hispanic population. But he was truly known as an advocate for all students of all walks of life. So it's really exciting uh, to, to be at a school that is, is, is such a proud place to be for our Hispanic community and all students. And, and that's, that's, that's really exciting. So, you know, my mission right now is to try and empower our young Hispanic youth to find their place in the arts and to find their place in the theater as well. I love that. So not only are you an exceptional teacher, you and your husband, Michael, are also exceptional humans because talk about fostering and what joy that has brought the two of you. Okay, so Michael and I were foster parents for 10 years with Kids in Distress. It's an amazing agency that is in the Florida area. Um, we have fostered over the course of those 10 years, a little over around 31, 32 children. Um, our daughter, we had as a foster child at three months old and we adopted at four years old. Um, we have since stopped fostering only because it was time for us to focus on our immediate family unit. You know, our daughter grew up uh, having to kind of share everything with other kids and everything. And as she got older, it, she needed a little bit more of a, of a permanent spot where children weren't coming in and out of the home. And, and, and so we, we decided to take a break from fostering. It's something that we will probably continue to do when, when we are older and when she is off to college. He actually found a love for working in dependency and he now actually supervises uh, a group homes that we actually helped start that the concept is it's a family foster home rather than shift staff. So we actually lived in a group home for almost six years where we had large groups of children that we were able to keep together. Uh, because when you have one child that comes into care, oftentimes it's easy, you can find a, a place for them to be when two or more children come in or larger groups of children come in. Sadly, they're always separated because they need more space. They, they need bedrooms. Um, so it was the most amazing experience for us. Um, a lot of people think that fostering has to do with helping children. And while I think it does, it's more about helping families that are in need and helping to repair a family unit. And being part of that is just, it is the most amazing experience on the face of the planet. We're still in touch with a number of the families that we have children that had reunified with parents or went with extended relatives and, or, or were adopted out to other uh, adoptive families. So yeah. It's been amazing. Well, I, I think it's wonderful. Thanks to both of you for doing all of that. I know it's a big undertaking with every other job you have embracing your own child, but that's a big deal to move people forward. Finally, what gives you the most satisfaction each day with your job of teaching the arts? Oof. <laughs> the big one. The most satisfaction. Okay. Um, you know, I think that while the students in front of me, and this kind of circles back to one of the things that you had asked about, why is, is this so important long-term? You know, I think that the most rewarding moments for me, and again, I, I think back to when the announcement came out that I had been selected as the winner for the Tony Award for Excellence in Theater Education. The number of kids that come back and when they have a moment and they're in their late 20s, early 30s, and they're like asking themselves or, or, or they hit a crossroads and, and they're needing some guidance. The fact that my phone to this day will still ding with a text or ring with a call and I have these kids, sometimes the kids that I was the hardest on 
when a lot of times the kids that I was the hardest on when they were in my program and, and they reach out just knowing that they still have an adult in their lives that they were able to form a connection with that was real and authentic and genuine. Um, that, that right there. When the show closes and we move on to the next thing, sometimes I think that it's easy for us to, to wonder what was it all, what was it all for, you know, why? Um, but those lasting interpersonal relationships and, and truly the reason I got into education to begin with is that I needed nothing more in my life than somebody to see me, period, to see me for more than what was in front of them and more about who I was as a person. And I didn't have that. And that's why I got into education. And that is what keeps me coming back day after day after day is that in this craft and in, in this industry, it is palpable. And, and the change that we are able to make is something that lasts forever. I love that. Beautiful answer. Well, once again, submissions are now being accepted for the 2024 Excellence in Theater Education Award. So please just click the link above to submit your teacher today. Jason, thank you for dropping by to chat with me today. And thank okay. you for all that you do to nurture the next generation of just humans. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. And I encourage everyone out there to find a teacher that is a theater teacher that's made a difference and nominate them for this incredible, incredible honor and award. Good one. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you at the theater. Thank you.